Your support helps us bring you programs you love. Go to wyomingpbs.org, click on support, and become a sustaining member or an annual member. It's easy and secure. Thank you. Over the last four decades, if you've been in southeastern Wyoming and you like country music, you may have come across this guy. Country music, Wyoming style with Peppy, next on Wyoming Chronicle. Funding for this program was provided by the members of the Wyoming PBS Foundation. Thank you for your support. We're pleased to be joined on Wyoming Chronicle with Peppy. Peppy, you're a country music legend, maybe, in this part no. of Wyoming. <laughs> Welcome. Um, uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for thinking of me. Absolutely. It was a pleasure for me to meet you during Frontier Days, where for dozens of years you've played at Little America every night during Frontier Days. Uh, yes, yeah, indeed. Uh, I've been blessed to... Uh, uh, have Little America always invite me back for Frontier Days. And of course, country music is your thing, and you've been playing for over four decades in this part of Wyoming. Yeah, yes I have. <laughs> Tell, let's talk a little bit about your history. Um, why country music? When did, when did you learn to play? Well, uh, my first recollection of wanting to play was uh, uh, sitting, uh, I think it had to be like Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner. And my, my grandmother just got this brand new Magnavox black and white TV. And I was still in the high chair and I turned around and looked and I saw a, a gentleman playing guitar and singing. And it hit me like a bolt of lightning that that's what I wanted to do. And even at a young age like that. So I bugged my parents for a long time. Uh, uh, every birthday, every Christmas, I want a guitar, I want a guitar, you know. Uh, it took a long time. Finally, my grandparents got me a guitar and I was, uh, uh, learned how to play guitar. Did you take music classes in school? Did, were you in the band? How, how did you learn? No, I, <coughs> I think back to that and wished I would have because I would have learned music. And, uh, but no, I, uh, I, I didn't have any uh, schooling on it or anything. I took, some, I took a couple of lessons from a gentleman. Uh, it turned out that he wanted more of an audience rather than he wanted to teach somebody guitar. Mm -hmm. So. I would go to the music stores and buy these the books with little chord diagrams on them and uh, and the words of the songs that I'd hear on the radio, learn the chords and then uh, uh, learn to play the song that way. So you're self-taught. Pretty, Pretty much, much. self-taught, yeah. Why do you think country music grabbed you? Uh, growing up in that in the, in the when when I did, there was all kinds of music going out. And that was here in Rock, Cheyenne. You, is where you grew yes, up. Yes, uh, born and raised here in Cheyenne. All kinds of music happening. My, uh, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents, and she, and she listened to big band, so I would listen to big band with her. All of my friends were listening to rock and roll. Uh, I like country, um, so I, I was. Uh, I had a big mixture of music in my life. Rock and roll, I couldn't quite sing it, and uh, uh, even though I did like it, but it, uh, it somehow didn't suit me. So. Um, Country music was more of a draw for me, so I just got into country music. So not only did you learn to play by yourself, you also learned how to sing on your own? Yeah, uh, that was another thing. With, want, with wanting a guitar, now na naturally the second thing I wanted was a tape recorder. So I'd spend a lot of time when I got a tape recorder down in my bedroom trying different uh, um, uh, voices and stuff, inflections and um, things taping it, listening it to a back, and trying to figure out what I could do with my voice and mm -hmm. how I could get better with my voice. Were you good then? Did you? Oh no, you it was terrible, it was terrible, <laughs> you know. I remember making a tape, and I was just goofing around and trying different things, and uh, I, was, uh, I had a bedroom down in the basement, and I was walking up, and uh, my sister had gotten hold of that tape, and I remember her running, going, "Oh, you got to hear this! This is hilarious!" And she played me goofing around, uh -huh. and it it hurt me, <laughs> you know. But I got over it. How old were you at the time that you oh, were doing this? Junior I was probably still in grade school. Okay, grade yeah, school. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 
<clears throat> so who did you like to hear back in those days? Who did you develop an ear for? I think the first one that really uh, comes to mind is probably Buck Owens. Uh, was a big draw into stuff. Um, uh, I like really like Neil Diamond. Uh, on the countryside again then when Merle Haggard hit the market, it was just all about Merle Haggard for me. I thought he was the greatest thing to ever come around. You know, and uh, of course then I'd listen to, um, this is the day of the LP of course, right? So on Sundays we'd sit around and listen to um, Johnny Cash, um, Johnny Horton, Carl Smith, um, Dave Dudley, all, all kinds of different artists. And uh, I would just learn and uh, listen to their voices, what they did with their voices. And also female artists. Female artists do a lot with their voices. I've heard you sing, sing Patsy Cline, by the way. Right, correct. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I, I just listened and learned uh, from other people. We want to make sure that our viewers get to hear you sing, so a couple times during this interview, we're going to cut away to songs that we recorded earlier, and let's do that right now. I'd love to. continue our interview now with Peppy. What did we just hear? Uh, a song that I wrote called All Because Two People Fell in Love. Um, <clears throat> my wife and I were shopping down in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado. We went into a garden shop and they had a sign that read All Because Two People Fell in Love. I said that that's a pretty good little hook for a song. So uh, I got an idea for it and wrote it and was playing it. Uh, I have a cousin that's also a musician and I was telling him about the sign. He goes, oh, well, uh, uh, Brad Paisley's already got one out by that name of that. I go, uh -oh. I go, yeah, but it's not this one. So I'll continue to keep this one. <laughs> is, it, um, is it fun for you to write? Is it, do you find it easy, difficult? No, it's pretty difficult, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I find myself a lot of times, you know, trying to write in the first person, and all of a sudden I'll be in the second person and then dropping into the third person. It's really hard for me uh, to keep on a path. I've really got to watch where you're going, you know, your uh, thoughts stray. 
Writing's hard. Writing's hard. So give me an idea then. We, we get to middle school and high school. Are you playing a lot? Do you back off a little bit? Or are you still learning quite a, quite a bit about No, music? probably still learning. At, mm -hmm. at that time uh, in high school, uh, throughout school and everything, uh, it was just mainly playing in the basement, uh, playing in my bedroom. Uh, I didn't have a lot of friends that actually played or anything back then. So it was just basically hearing a song on the radio, wanting to sing it, and, uh, uh, and pick it up and learn how to play it. When was the first time you got paid for playing? Oh, the first time I got paid for playing, um, I was uh, sitting at home and got a call from the music store that I bought all my stuff from. They said, hey, they need a singer in Wheatland, Wyoming. So it wasn't even a local gig. No. You're on the road right away. I went all the way to Wheatland <clears throat> to get fired. Uh, whoops. <laughs> so we got up there. Uh, the guy that was supposed to be running the band was already uh, 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 on his way uh, uh, into the night. And um, uh, the drummer we had wasn't a very good, I, just nothing clicked. And uh, it was my first gig. I had no idea uh, what I should be doing at that time. And finally about midnight they said, you know what, we, we, we've had enough. <laughs> you guys can go. <laughs> Was that, um, again, did, did that uh, set you back at all, or was that just no. something you learned from? Yeah, it's just a learning experience. You go, okay, now, you know, now I've got that under me, so let's, let's try to progress. And I knew one of the things, I always wanted to be a singer more than a musician. So I knew that I would have to find good musicians to be able to uh, uh, carry me through what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then you, you not only do things on your own, you've been parts of bands. Oh yeah, in fact right now I play with um, a couple of bands, so I have a group of um, some local guys that are called Alice and Draw we play, and then I just recently joined up with a couple of gentlemen out of uh, Colorado with Barely Getting By, and uh, we play uh, every chance we can get. Sure. Yeah. Have you back to your earlier days, is this all you've done or have you had other vocations in your life? Oh no, I, I started out um, uh, cooking chicken with Kentucky Fried Chicken and then I went on to become a manager and okay. I traveled around uh, a lot of different towns opening or uh, cleaning up Kentucky Fried Chickens and I ended up in New Orleans, Louisiana. Wow. We bought a 13 store market down there. I went down there, had a couple stores, cleaned them up and then got out of, uh, got out of New Orleans, came back up here. Uh, I also was a welder. I welded on I learned from a gentleman here who was a very good welder, he was an old railroader, and he had an ornamental iron shop, and he taught me how to weld, so um, I learned from him and then uh, welded on the power plant, was a pipe fitter for a while, made enough money to buy enough equipment to go on the road with a band, so I bought a van and a PA system and off we went. I haven't looked back since. Yeah, so where, where are you playing at, in, in those days? Is it this part of the, the country? Is it all no, over the country? Or? No, we went all over. Yeah. We, went, uh, we went up to North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, um, Colorado some. This is before the internet. So oh, way before the how internet. are you getting gigs? We had an agent. Okay. The agent sent us on the road. So we spent a lot of time out there, a lot of time. Back in, uh, back in those days, uh, a guy could actually make a living on the road, you know. Not much of a living, but you can make a living. Do you look back on those days fondly, or was it a, was it a lot of work? Oh, or? It was a lot of fun, yeah. yeah. I, had a, I had a blast out there. I had some great guys with me. Um, <clears throat> we had a lot of fun, so. Did you ever have aspirations, like many, to get to Nashville and become a country music, music star in the real business of country music? Yeah, naturally, yeah. So I, I spent some time in Nashville. Um, hitting the streets and the clubs, and uh, I got the opportunity to um, actually play on the Grand Ole Opry. Really? And uh, uh, I thought then, oh my goodness, I've arrived, you know, and uh, it just didn't quite work out. But uh, um, I had a lot of fun, you know, so. And then I, I was invited to play in Las Vegas, so now I go down, to the, I'll, I'll be playing for in Las Vegas for NFR, this will be my fourth year going down there, so. Uh, so you're still on the road at times. Yes, at times. Yeah, uh -huh. at times. Yeah. Are you at the point where you kind of pick and choose? 
Pretty much. Uh -huh. You know, I, I take a lot of gigs. I still play in northern Colorado, a lot in, in Wyoming. Uh, uh, We're filming this just a couple weeks after Frontier Days has ended in Wyoming. What, give us a sense of your schedule during Frontier Days. I had 22 gigs in 10 days. Uh -huh. So some days I'd start as early as 10 o'clock in the morning and go to 11 o'clock at night. So In and out of Frontier Park and all over town? Yeah, I'd start out at Frontier Park um, and then go play at Little America and do their barbecue, which uh, where I met you. Absolutely. And then run from Little America out to the Outlaw Saloon and uh, was doing their outdoor uh, venue that they have out there. Just some, fortunately, just some 90-minute shows. So, uh, but it, uh, And you caught a break this year with weather? This year we did catch a break, yeah, yeah. yeah. Weather can be really brutal during <clears throat> frontier days. So are you still learning? Are you getting better? Oh, yeah, I'm still learning, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a learning process. Every young person that uh, comes up and goes, I, I would like to be a musician. I would like, and that, that's the first thing I say, do you like learning? You know, I go, because it's a never-ending learning process. Think about learning today, though, is kids have the Internet. They've got YouTube, and they can see, they can hear. They can, it's a different process than you had in, back in your day when you had to go to the music store, buy the sheet music, do a little more work on your own. Yeah, well, the same thing is you, you listen, you hear something, and uh, you want to learn it. Um, um, my whole deal was learning enough songs to be able to get me through a, a gig so I could make money doing mm -hmm. it. And uh, again, that's a long learning process, and uh, you got to have a pretty good memory to remember all of those songs as well. So, yeah. You know. Let's um, let's hear another one, uh, Peppy. Um, well, we you know, there's a story behind this song. We were talking about going to Nashville. Um, I met a gentleman down there, and uh, uh, he was pushing some of my songs off on radio, and I'd I'd written this song, and. Uh, he had heard it and said, and he was working with Curb Records at the time. And he says, "What well, you know? We know you want to release this song, but we think Merle Haggard would bring this into the top ten for you. Would you let Merle Haggard record it?" And I went, "Are you kidding? I I wrote it for Merle Haggard, you know." Mm -hmm. He he got it. Unfortunately, there were some complications and never got cut. But. Um, just to know that Merle Haggard had listened to a song that I'd written for him was, uh, you know, uh, was awesome. And the title of the song? It's called Wish We Didn't Need No Money. And we're going to listen to it right now. Now I wish we didn't need no money to give we want and need I just sit around all day with my money someplace by the water underneath a big old tree I'd have me a horse my city we'd ride around until the end of Never think about the cost of living Or think about the price that one has to pay And I wish we didn't need no money To get the things we want and Sit around all day with my money. Some place by the water underneath a big old tree. Worry. In the rising 
cost of life goes up each day. Now there's people putting pressure on other people, and I just think there's better ways to spend my days. I wish we didn't need no money. So, Pepe, you um, um, continue to meet lots of different um, people in country music. Give us an idea today who you really like to listen to. Oh, um, today's market, not a whole, not a whole lot. <laughs> I'm an old country guy, and I like the old country people. I, I had the pleasure of working with Ray Price, uh, which is an old country crooner. Great guy. Uh, met him through another mutual friend. Uh, through there, he let me come and open some of his shows. Now, they had the um, Last of the Breed tour going on where it was Willie, Merle Haggard, and Ray Price. So I was hanging out with Ray Price on his bus, and uh, he brought me over and introduced me to Willie on Willie's bus, and then uh, backstage later on with Merle Haggard. And uh, uh, it was just awesome to be in the presence of all three of those, sure. which were all guys that I grew up listening to and learning from. Um, so I still basically hang with the, um, you know, the old original guys that I, I learned from and everything. Mm -hmm. Of course, the first original guy that uh, uh, I got into, and the, and the very first song I ever learned was Your Cheating Heart, and it was because they had a movie out about Hank Williams, um, I believe it was George Hamilton, that uh, was portraying um, Hank Williams at the time. And uh, Your Cheating Heart was the first song I think I actually learned how to play without having to look at a book. You know? <laughs> We're going to play that for for our viewers here in just a little while. But one of the things I think they may notice when you play is is you use technology, and I'm sure that the way you play things today isn't the same as it was, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Right. No. No. Um, I have this <clears throat> machine, and um, um, I walked into a club one day and saw I saw a gentleman playing it, and uh, it absolutely fit what I needed in my life at that time. I had come off the road. I didn't have a band anymore. I was raising a, my daughter, and uh, uh, my wife had worked days, and then I would go to work nights. I learned this uh, how to play this one-man band thing, and uh, I was able to go and still maintain uh, uh, a career in music, if you want to call it that, uh, playing in this one-man band, finding smaller venues that wanted to have music uh, without the cost of a big band. So. Uh, I focused on that for a long time and uh, got my daughter through school and, uh, you know, uh, my wife and I was able to stay together, <laughs> you know, made a wonderful life That's out a big of it. Plus. Why the name Peppy? Well, Peppy was given to me um, by my grandmother. She's really? an Italian lady, uh, one of the best friends I ever had. And uh, But when I was born, she had a cartoon that she liked. Uh, uh, it was an Italian cartoon, cartoon called uh, Pepe Namoco. And somehow I got the name Pepe, and it stuck, and it's the only one I've gone by my whole life. And I don't think there's too many people out there that actually know my real name, and I ain't going to let them know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you by Pepe. I think everyone in this part of Wyoming certainly does as well. And, and we appreciate that you've joined us today on Wyoming Chronicle, Pepe. Yeah. We talked a little bit ago about taking us out with your cheating heart. Why don't we do that right now? Sounds good. Thanks so much for joining Thank us Thank you. You bet. Your cheating heart will make you leave. You cry and cry and try to sleep. But sleep won't come. Cheers.
Funding for this program was provided by the members of the Wyoming PBS Foundation. Thank you for your support.